In Gothenburg, a haunting incident has unearthed the chilling reality of youth violence. A 13-year-old boy stood outside the offices of Elbit Systems, his small frame overshadowed by the gravity of the situation as gunfire erupted. This disturbing act marked an alarming pattern of increasingly bold attacks. As authorities scrambled to unravel the implications of such youthful aggression, arrested and charged with attempted murder, the boy was yet another scapegoat in a dangerous game, one that has seen a rise in teenagers stepping into the murky waters of organized crime. The repercussions of this incident reverberate far beyond the streets of Gothenburg, linking it to broader international tensions. Just days earlier, shots had echoed outside the Israeli embassy in Stockholm, while a grenade exploded near the Danish embassy in Copenhagen. In both cases, fear gripped the community. As law enforcement struggled to decipher the motivations behind these violent displays, speculations about Iranian involvement in these attacks emerged, creating an unsettling connection between local gangs and global geopolitics. At the heart of this turmoil lies the murky world of Swedish gangs, particularly the notorious Foxtrot gang. Their grip on society has tightened, with their influence seeping into the lives of the youth. Driven by revenge and power, clashes between rival leaders have escalated the violence, leading to tragedies that ripple through families and neighborhoods alike. The murder of a rival leader's mother has ignited a flame of retribution that appears unquenchable, putting innocent lives at risk. In the shadows of this escalating violence, Sweden's leaders face a grave challenge. Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson's examination of the youth violence crisis has resonated deeply as he highlights integration issues amidst a changing demographic landscape. The image of children, many of whom were mere toddlers a decade ago caught up in this cycle of violence is a heart-wrenching reality that many are struggling to confront. The narrative shifts as criminologists like David Saustall describe a new wave of gang participation, pivoting from ideology to economic necessity. The gig economy of gang activity offers perilous opportunities for financial gain entrenching youth further into a life of crime. Justice Minister Gunnar Strommer's identification of terrorism, state actors and organized crime as primary threats underscores the gravity of the situation, forcing Swedish authorities to reevaluate their strategies. In a society grappling with such complex issues, the path forward remains fraught with challenges. As these teenage guns for hire continue to rise, Sweden must confront the consequences of youth violence understanding that each act is a step further into a world marred by fear and danger. The solution demands concerted action, empathy, and a commitment to change as communities strive to restore hope.